Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a top-down character, kind of like Link's Awakening, Animal Crossing, and those stylized games, or those top-down 3 fourths view games. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to my content. Actually, I'm going to go over to my third-person character, go to Blueprints, right-click, and I'm going to create a Blueprint class. And I'm just going to select Character, and I'm going to call this BP Top Down. And now I'm just going to drag this over my default pawn class just so I can test it out. And I'll double click to open it. And now I need to add a few things to this. So what I'm going to do is when I have this BP top down selected or the top parent, I am going to select a skeletal mesh. In this case, I'll just use the SKM coin. Simple. And then for the anim class, I want to select my AVP coin animation blueprint. So you'll start seeing it animate. And what I want to do is just drag this down all the way to the floor of this capsule and turn it 90 degrees to the right so that it's facing forward with the arrow. Now what I'm going to do is go over to my event graph and I need to add a few things. So on begin play, I'm going to add a sequence. And for the zero, I just want to add my input mapping. So I'm going to cast to my player controller and my object will be get controller. And now as player controller, I want to look for that enhanced input user settings. So I'm just going to right click here and search for the enhanced input, the get enhanced input local player subsystem, just like this. And then for the as player controller, I'm just going to connect it here. And for this branch, I'm going to bring this to an is valid node and select the question mark one at the very bottom. And if this enhanced input local player subsystem is valid, then I'm going to add a mapping context. And in order to add this add mapping context, you're going to want to drag it out from the enhanced input local player subsystem. And for this, I will just select IMC default for now. This might change later in the tutorial, but for now, I'm just going to set it to default. And now I'm going to add my enhanced input action. So now I'm going to add my enhanced input action, IA move. So first, let me highlight all of these. Click Q to even out the lines, make sure it's one straight line. And I'll just drag down whatever's overlapping just to organize it a bit. And this looks fine to me. I'm gonna hover all I'm gonna hover over all of it. Click C to create a comment and I'll just call this add input mapping. And I'll change the color to something dark just for personal preference. So now when triggered, there is gonna be a few things. So my action value will break vector 2D. And then for the X and Y, I want to make a vector and for the Y as well. And Z can be left as zero. And now I'm just going to normalize this and leave the tolerance as 0 0.0001. And then for the return value, I want to make rot from X. And now when triggered, I want to set actor rotation. And then I want to add movement input. And from the make rot from X, we're going to connect it here to the set actor rotation. And from the return value of normalize, we're going to add it to the, at the world direction for the add movement input. And this will give us those instant turns and instant movement in those directions. So I'll highlight over all of them, click C to comment, and just call this movement. And I'll hit compile. But we're missing a camera, so if we were to play this now, we wouldn't be able to even see our character. So what I'm going to do is add, and I want to add a spring arm. And then I also want to add a camera with the spring arm as the parent. Now for the sprint, when the spring arm selected, I'm going to do something like target arm length 500, socket offset is 500. And now I want to rotate the camera. So I'm going to select the camera. And for the Y of my rotation, I'm going to do something like negative 50 to point directly to my character. So when I select the spring arm, I want to make sure I can get a pretty straight line. So maybe I'll change this to a negative 45. So this looks pretty straight. And now when I hit compile and play, you see my character's pretty far out. And when I hit WASD, it is not working as anticipated. And that's because our input actions are not correctly set up because it's using the IMC default. So I'm going to change this. So I'm going to hit escape to cancel out of that. And now I want to create inputs that will I want to create an input action. So for input, I'm going to create an input action called IA movement. And yeah, there is one called move, but I am just going to go to my BP character later on and just remove this part and replace it with the IA movement that we create. So no worries there. So when I double click IA movement, there are a few things I want to do with my IA movement. First, I want to change from digital bool. 
I want to change my value type to an axis 2D because we are playing on a 2D axis and I'll hit save. Now in my inputs, I'm just going to right click and for input, I'm going to create a new input mapping context called IMC underscore new, or actually I'll change this to IMC underscore top down. And I'll double click to open this and in the mappings, I'm going to click this plus sign to add a mapping to our array and select that IA movement. And I'm going to add four. So for WASD, so the first one, I'll click this keyboard and then I can select the key value by clicking it on my keyboard. So I'm going to click W here. So you'll see that this W is assigned. And under modifiers, I'm going to add one and change this to scalar. And I'll leave it just like that. So now I'm going to add another one for A. So I'll hit this keyboard, select A, and for modifiers, I'm going to add two. So the first one will be negate to go in the opposite direction or the negative direction. And then I also want to select swizzle input axis value. And now for the S and D, I just want to do the opposite of my W and A. So I'm going to hit this plus sign to add another one. So I'll select S. So instead of scalar, I'm just going to do negate in the modifier and then click this plus sign. And then for D on the keyboard, I'm going to add a modifier that is just the swizzle input axis. So I'll hit save here. And now when I go back to my BB top down, I'm going to change that mapping context to IMC top down. And then for my enhanced input action, I'm going to call my IA movement. And remember to connect that action value to the break vector 2D. And then for triggered, connect it to your, to your set actor rotation. And I'll hit compile and save. And now when I hit play, and so when I hit W, I'll go up, S is down, A or D is right, and A is left. So it's working correctly, but there's a couple problems. My character is not actually turning. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot what's going on there. So when you select your PP dot, your BP top down character, scroll down to pawn. Then under the pawn section, I want to uncheck this use controller rotation. Yeah. And now when I hit compile and save and play it, you're going to see that my character will be able to turn. But the issue is that the camera turns with it. So we want to make sure the camera stays still at all times. So now when I have my spring arm, make sure it's not a child of the mesh. And for the spring arm, I just want to select this use pawn control rotation and hit this check. And now when I go back to my third person map, hit play, you're going to see that when I use my WASD, my character turns instantly and rotates and instantly starts moving in the direction I select. And that's how you start creating a simple top down character in Unreal Engine 5. Thanks for watching Code Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Feel free to join our Discord community. And if you want to support the channel, the Patreon link is in the, descri is in the description below. Thank you.